what did I predict that Hugh Jackman was going to get nominated in the sun? He, he was on your best actor list. Was yes. he? Okay. Yeah. I officially regret that. Boy, it's a, it's a pretty bad movie and a pretty bad performance too. I did put the Hugh Jackman would win. Oh, you know what else I did? I put six actors for best actor. <laughs> so we'll just start here. How are you feeling about all this? How are you feeling about these Oscar nominations? Oh boy, I, there's a universe where they're pretty good this year, and there's a universe where they're pretty bad, and it's a it's a real fine line for how some of these things are going to break. What's the pretty bad universe? There's a pretty bad universe where you see a lot of people at movies that are, are quite poor who end up with very celebratory mornings. I I, I quite love Anna de Armas, but I would really like Blonde to not receive a Best Actress nomination. I quite adore Hugh Jackman, and boy. Boy, would the sun be a bummer if it shows up here. So uh, as, as someone who hasn't seen the sun, it's really that bad. Oh, it's horrible. And I think I had the father as my like number one or number two movie of the year a couple of years ago. Uh, I think depending on what you count small acts as and boy, boy, did I hate the sun. It's really, it's really, really manipulative and try And I, Jack was trying, but whew, not a good movie. Well, if he tried and it works, then good on him, you know? Oh, I get to. I just realized I got to share the audio too. So give me a second. Um, I, I, I like. I've, I've obviously, you know, accepted it by now. I remain shocked that Elvis is as strong a contender as it is. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer too. Yeah, <laughs> like Butler. I'm, I'm here for his campaign. I think he's really good in that. the The fact that it's a Best Picture nom is like, and then like, there's no question about it. I mean, I, I'm wearing a Criterion shirt right now, so uh, I am definitely not the Elvis ilk today. Um, it's fine. What's the front runner for Best Picture? Ooh, I don't know. I, I actually don't, which is sort of interesting. I think we'll have a better perspective after today. I, I, you can kind of make a case for like six movies winning, mm-hmm. which is sort of nuts. I, I, I guess it's it's. I want to say Fablemans, but no one saw that movie. I don't know. There's the backlash for against everything everywhere is is growing strong right now. I almost wonder if Top Gun ends up like second place on every single person from Beverly Ballot. Hills, California. Please welcome the president. What is the backlash to uh, and sciences? Everything yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Oh, that it's like too too gimmicky and the like and Good morning, too many everyone. butt plugs. Uh, okay, okay. that is that is in the movie. It is so exciting to be back live once again to kick off the official countdown to the 95th Oscars. On She's dressed festively. 12th. For nearly a century now, the Oscars has been the most esteemed celebration of movies in the world. It is a chance for us to showcase the very best films of the past year and for global movie fans to come together as we shine a spotlight on artists working on. No disrespect, Lee. I want to talk to us. Um, (laughs) Have they always done it like with a crowd and they just didn't do it for COVID? Once upon a time, they used to. Um, it used to have like a set time too. Like I think it was like eight seventeen Eastern yeah. time, five seventeen West Coast. Hey, it's eight thirty two as we speak. So to help, shout out to being punctual, Oscars. Okay, Riz Ahmed and Allison Williams will be on screen soon. I'm gonna let it play. Countries. I'm, I'm writing. Now. I'm writing down Please. the list Here of today's hosts movies so that way I can keep track of nominees. Uh, totals. Star oh, okay. Good. Good. Of Megan Allison Williams. <laughs> The whale. <laughs> I've heard <laughs> how you feel. It's not my favorite movie of the year. Uh huh. Alrighty. Good morning, everybody. We've been awake. All yeah, Riz Ahmed fellow would make a good James Bond. Uh, so I've heard. So honored. So yeah, let's make this full screen. To reveal the nominations for the 95th Oscars. Good morning, everybody. Riz, I am so happy to be here with you. You've been nominated twice and you won an Oscar last year. So I just wanted to know, did you watch this both of those times? Um, I did watch it. Yeah, but I didn't wake up to watch it. And the reason for that is I never really fell asleep in the first place. Mm. There was just a lot of anticipation. Mm. And I know there's a lot of people who can't wait for us to get started. So without further ado, yeah. here are the nominees. So oh, adorable banter. Oh, All righty. Shout out to the cast of Girls. <laughs> actress in a supporting role. Angela Bassett. Ah, Panther. there's your winner. Forever. There. The strangest front runner I've ever seen in an Oscar race. Hong Chao. 
in the whale. Yay! That means okay. big support for the whale, though, which is a bummer. But she's great. She's the best part of that movie. In the yes! Of All right, three for three. Jamie Lee Curtis in everything. Four for four. Yay! And then the fifth was always the... And Stephanie Schu- Oh, five for five. Everything Everywhere gets five. Gets two nominees. Wow. Oh, there man. Film go. Twitter must be freaking out that Stephanie Next got in. That's great. For achievement in costume design. So the Michelle Williams last minute switch didn't work? Babylon. Yay, costume Babylon. Design. Black Panther. Wakanda forever. All right. Two for two. Ruth Carter. Oh. Elvis, Elvis. Yep. Yes. Everything, everywhere. Hey! hey. There you go. And Mrs. Harris goes to Paris. All right, I had the women, the woman king. So that movie's that's good. Out. Mrs. Harris goes to Paris. And given the extraordinary sound design on your film, Sound of Metal, why don't you take this next category? Oh. Well, here are the nominees for achievement in sound. All Quiet on the Western Front. I discovered that was a remake. Avatar. <laughs> there, there's your winner here. The Batman. Hey! hey Batman. There you Doesn't go. make up for the score Elvis. getting snubbed. Boo. And Elvis. And Top, Top Gun. Gun. Top Gun. All right, I, had, I had everything everywhere in here. So the Batman takes that. Next up, here are the nominees for Achievement in Music. Original score. Come on, women talking. All Quiet on the Western Front. Man. Babylon. Yeah, it's so good. Three noms Everything for Babylon. A Sharon. All right. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Okay. <laughs> and the Fablemans. Okay, I missed. Oh, I, I got three of five. No, God. no, no. no women Pinocchio. talking didn't even get. No women talking. The yeah. The two award categories are on a writer. Oh, the first. One of the best movies of the year. No one cares. I again, I haven't seen it, so therefore I'm, I'd be shocked if the Academy hasn't All seen it. On the Western Front. This is which one? Adapted. Adapted. Burton, Come on, Top Gun. And Ian Stokel. That, that'd be. I'd be here Johnson for it. A Knives Out Mystery. Yes! All right. That's two, yeah. two for two. Living. And, written by hey! Ishiguro. Three for three. Those are two good ones, man. Top Gun! Maverick. Top Gun! Yeah! <laughs> oh. Oh, I love it when we get like seven and nominees for one movie. Story. Wonderful. Uh-huh. That's that five, whatever. <laughs> and women talking. Women talking. There you go. Wow! All yes, right. so the, the cool kid group misses. came through. Good, thank God. Okay, the writing good. blows on the whale. And here are the nominees for original screenplay: The Banshees of Inna Sharon. Yep, of course. That is one. Everything everywhere. Everything, there everywhere, you go. Two for two. Written by Daniel Kwan and Daniel Shiner. The Fablemans. Fablemans. Three for right. three. Tar. Tar and what's the other one here? Tar, um, written by Todd. Fields. The fifth I have is Triangle of Sadness. Triangle, it's probably Triangle. And Triangle. There you go. Yeah. Five for five. By Ruben Usman. Now it's with great pleasure that I get to announce this year's nominees for best live action short film. Because you won it last year, right? He did. An Irish goodbye. <laughs> Ifalu. I like that Riz clearly learned the pronunciations. Oh, I've seen that one. There we go. Ride. And the red suitcase. Three for five. Not bad. Not bad at all. The six. I'll take it. I'm now the nominees for best animated (laughs) short. Animated short. The boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. Yeah, that's really good. Is it really? Yeah, I really like that. The flying sailor. I'm... Miss this one. <laughs> Ice merchants. Got that one. My year of dicks. Yeah. What? I, I saw that. I saw that at South by Southwest. I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and an ostrich told me the world is fake, and I think I believe. There you go. Same. Wow. That is. <laughs> quite a list of nominees. Me too. No comment. Here are the nominees. Actor in a supporting actor, role. Supporting role. Brendan Gleeson. That's in one. In Come on, Keo. The better part oh. of that movie. Tyree Henry. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. 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 Ah. 
Judd Hirsch in The Fable. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Fableman's love. Fableman's your new favorite. Barry Keoghan in the band. Yeah. Oh, so Ki uh Kwan. And Ki Hui Kwan. Yeah, so they got Kwan's winning. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah, he's going to win. Okay. All right, three of five. And I like the other two. I like Brian's Harry Hand. This is a delight. I don't want this to end. I have to say, that movie is pretty good. You than Megan. What, the Fablemans? I saw. Uh, Ca- yeah. Causeway. Oh, Causeway, I haven't She's seen. Not around, is she? Uh, you promised me that she wouldn't be around? Yeah, yeah. Get yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, the... No, we should be good. We're All right, good. come on. No more cute banter. Uh, Let's go. Anyway, we'll be right back <laughs> because in just a few minutes. This is oh. why the Oscars <laughs> are failing. <laughs> really? Because when they do any hint of personality, we're like, shut up, move on. Especially when it's us, <laughs> the yeah. people who are like, "Fuck this." <laughs> okay, so we've got so Fablemans is winning Best Picture. I think we can if if Hirsch I... got in. Hirsch hasn't been getting in anywhere. Yeah, and... but Dano didn't either, and they got two in. Banshees got two in for supporting actor. Yeah, but I think Banshees was always. They're kind of like the two and three seed. I mean, I guess it's a question of Dano or Hirsch getting in there but there's been a lot of ben wishaw and i think the shocker it, it, i it's not my favorite but i think the shocker is the lack of uh eddie redmayne for the good nurse they've been campaigning that hard and it's gotten mm-hmm. nominated pretty much everywhere uh, they, i'm just looking at precursors so the fableman's got one in for supporting one in it's gotten a nomination for screenplay so does everything everywhere so does uh so does uh, Banshees. Yep. Banshees could win. Those are your three. Those are your three right now. Which I, I think that was the that was the case going in. And I think that's just the, the race is no clearer to me. You know, I also I'm not discounting the possibility that Top Gun is third on everyone's ballot and it just wins by sort of sheer force of being very good mm-hmm. and not offending anyone. <laughs> and it seems like it's managed to avoid the predictable sort of blowback. They've run a nice campaign. I'm shocked we didn't see Cruz as much, but I think that's that's part of the. I was going to say, isn't that by design? Yeah, I was going to say that's that might be part of the campaign that they you don't want to see Cruz as much. T- I in trying to update my predictions as well as keep track of the thing, um, I chose one over the other, so I do not know how many each did what. So. Eh, we'll figure it out. Yeah, I'll, um, wait, I'll wait for the tweet of, from somebody later. Is Angela Bassett the just the weirdest winner? Like she's good in the movie, but I I didn't leave Wakanda forever thinking this is this is Marvel's first Oscar, and that that's what's going to happen. It's it's so bizarre. It she, is. She's, she's but the also, lock, most lock performance, right? Yeah, her or her or Quan for everything everywhere. I think both supportings are are locks. Yeah. Um, I I think it's weird. I think the there's there's a this also goes to not that it's a bad thing in this case, but Oscar politics of like it's their time. Like we didn't we didn't get a chance to give her. She hasn't won one before, right? Or did she win one for? Oh, she didn't didn't win for for Whitney. Okay, not not Whitney. Tina. She was. uh, What's love got to do with it? Yeah. There you go. Okay, we're back. Welcome back live from the Academy's headquarters in Beverly Hills, where Riz and I are revealing the nominees for the 95th Oscars. Now, earlier we announced nine categories. Coming up now are the final 14, including Best Picture. Here are the nominees for Achievement in Music, Original Song. Shout out RRR. Yeah, I was just say, here's your not to, not to. Applause from Tell It Like a Woman. Uh, already one. Oh no, I got this one. I got this one. Great. First movie I haven't seen. Hand from Top Gun Maverick. Woo! Lift me up from Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Come on. Good after. Oh, I guess good afternoon's out. Not Damn to, it. Not to from RRR. <laughs> and this is a life from everything everywhere. Oh, huh. that's one I didn't have. That's another. That's another now, next point. That's, for, that's, that's a big point for everything. Yeah. yeah. Document. Oh, come on, thirty-eight. All That's the short. Breathes. Yeah. Oh, this is doc film. Never mind. All the breeds was pretty good. All the beauty and the bloodshed. All right, we're going chalk so far. Fire of love. Yes. Oh, you say chalk, and I'm, I'm way off on this. 
Oh, I have a screener that I should watch that now. Yeah, Navalny. Navalny. I saw. I have two of these, and I've seen none of them. And here are the nominees for best documentary short film. Come on, Thirty Eight at the Garden. Let's go, friend of the pod. The Elephant Whisperers. Shit. Does it go by T? Call out. Oh no. How do you measure a year? Mm, please be last. The Martha Mitchell effect. Oh no. T T T for thirty. And stranger. No. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Damn it. Oh well. Here are the nominees for best international feature film. Come on, close. A decision All to leave. It's on the Western Front, Germany. Argentina, 1985. Good movie. Argentina. Close. Belgium. Yes. Great. Io, Poland. No decision to leave. God oh, damn it. Oh, wow. The Quiet Girl. Ireland. There you go. Oh, my God. Dang, what? no decision to leave. Yeah. I had that there in mind. By, there goes my Park Chan. Best, animated best animated director surprise. Yeah. Fuck. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Front runner? Yeah, probably. I, I'll be honest. I like Marcel Puss in Boots the better. Shell with shoes on. Marcel's good too. Puss in Boots, the last book. There's your top three. Let's get what else the is left? Turning Red. Oh, Sea Beast. I like Sea Beast. And Turning Red. Oh, there you go. Four or five. I'll take it. Oh, good. I'm glad it's not Inu. Oh, I did not care for that one. Here are the nominees for achievement in makeup and hairstyling. Ugh, Elvis. Mm -hmm. All Quiet on the Western Front. The Batman. Ah, Batman. Hey, hey, hey. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Ooh. Oh, the whale's out. Elvis. Yeah. Oh, no. No, no. Here, here, here. here. I was going to say Babylon's out. Okay. Good day for the Batman. Allison Williams. Here are the nominees. Oh, Batman. somebody. <laughs> Talk. Western <laughs> Front. All right. All Quiet might have the most nominations the right the now. Water. That the Baptist predicted that. Babylon. All right. Yeah. Elvis. Fablemans. And the Fablemans. Yeah, okay. Five for five. The nominees for achievement in film editing are All Quiet. Should be Babylon. But the Banshees of Inner Sharon. Ooh. Hmm. Elvis. No All Quiet or Avatar. Everything Everywhere All at Once. Everything Everywhere really deserves Tar. this nomination. Really? And Top Gun. Maverick. No All Quiet or Avatar. Huh. I'm not surprised Excellent. by No Avatar. These for achievement in cinematography. The It Feels Long thing hurts. Oh, Avatar. Okay. It's on the Western Front. Which is not what editing is, but whatever. Bardo, False Chronicle, and a Handful of Truths. Uh, Elvis. Jeez. Empire Elvis. Light. Empire Light. There yeah, you that, go. Mo that movie's so bad, but it's Empire. really beautiful. Oh, no Top Gun, no Batman. No Top Gun was going to fucking win. Yeah. Now, achievement. Yo, Batman doesn't effects. deserve it. It's filming in front of TVs, but. Yeah. All quiet on the Western Front. All right, it's one. Here's the clearest Avatar. lock right Avatar. here. Yeah, Avatar. Yeah. The Batman. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. So Top Gun or Jurassic World? And Top Gun. Top Gun. Top Gun. Yeah. Fuck you, Jurassic World. Hell yeah. Very happy to be wrong. It's time for our final four awards. There you go. Here are the nominees for performance actor. by an actor. All right. In a Austin role. Butler. Austin Butler. That's in one. Elvis. My wife Ugh. will be happy. Colin Farrell in The Banshees of Inishara. Yeah. Brendan Fraser in The Whale. Paul Meskel. Yeah! Yeah! Woohoo! And Bill Nye in The Whale. There Living. you go. All righty. The science guy? <laughs> and now the, ah, the easy joke right there. Sorry. An actress in a leading role. I struggled here. Kate Blanchett. Well, time. not here. That was a, <laughs> I was going to say, there's two easy ones. Yeah. First and last here are very easy. Anna de Armas. Oh, yeah. she made it. 
Andrea Riseborough. In- oh, oh my god, it worked! <laughs> oh my god, it worked! <laughs> Michelle Williams in The Fablements. <laughs> Yo, that movie. That movie's good too. And this campaign worked. All I watched right. it. I watched it like three days before the campaign. It was like, <laughs> what a good performance! I can't believe it worked. For me, the first is achievement in directing. Dude, it's like and Mary McCormick. Like, went uh-huh. and did this herself because they're buddies and like asked every Martin favor McDonough, she could. The banshee. That's wild. Oh wow, McDonough got in. Daniel. They Kwan, hate Jim. Daniel Shine. Like Jim Cameron Everything just trying to save fucking things. movies. Steven Spielberg. Three for three. <laughs> I got Todd Field and All Quiet. Todd Field, Tar. Wait, it's not All Quiet. And Ruben Östlund, Triangle. Triangle. Wow, Sadness. that yeah. got the annual international spot. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, it's a good movie, though. Now the final category. I really have wanted it on poor my computer. Nominees for Best Motion Picture of the Year. Okay. All Quiet on the Western Front. Mm-hmm. Malte Brunet, producer. One for one. Avatar, The Way of Water. Right. James Cameron, two John two. Producers. The Banshees of Inna Sharon. Graham Broadbent, Pete Chermin, and Martin McDonough. Producers. Elvis, Baz Luhrmann, Catherine Martin, Gail Berman, Patrick McCormick, and Skylar Weiss. Producers. I don't think uh, Women Talking is getting Everything in. Everywhere All at Once. Daniel Me neither. Kwan, I yeah. Steinert, and Jonathan Wong. The screenplay nom is it. The Fablemans, Christy McCosco Krieger. All right, Stevens, we're hitting the locks Tony so far. Producers. Tar and Top Tar, Gun. Top Gun, locks. yeah. Tar. Yeah. Todd Field, Alexander Milshon. Oh, Triangle's going to get in. Producers. Just playing the alphabet game. Top Gun Maverick. Tom- they were doing that too. So the whale. Women yeah, tri- talking, triangle on the whale. Triangle set, I think. Triangle of Sadness. Okay, yep. there you go. Eric Hemendor. I actually have Lee to see Colbert. this movie. Producers. And women talking. Women talking yes! gets in. I yes! give up. No, Jeremy Clark- wow. I give up. That's so weird. I love it. <laughs> Great movie. This was such an honor and huge congratulations to all the nominees. Okay. I uh, hope you really soak up this moment and enjoy everything that lies ahead. And in case you didn't know, Saturday, February 11th is Global Movie Day. So go see the nominated movies at your local theater. Tell them we sent you and be better prepared for your Oscar pool. Mm-hmm. And thank when you is, when did they say? Show. February what? 11th. That's the so You could go Bowl. see Magic Mike's Last Dance. Super Bowl that weekend. Day. Sorry. I'm busy. <laughs> be focused on Joe Burrow finally winning. Yo, that was that was kind of the best case scenario for most of these. So what do we like? I so like far, women, women talking, baby. Is the that, best, is that you like branching out into feminism or are you talking about the movie? <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, it's, it's, it's my, my top ranked movie that uh, was nominated for best picture this year. So that, uh, that delights me when it's a surprise mm-hmm. as that one, that one kind of was, if you go on deadline right now and look at the, uh, look at the best actor, nominees on their mm-hmm. running thing they actually have in fact listed bill nye the science guy oh, as opposed to bill nye guy who frequently plays like vampires and shit and oh, budget no. sci-fi movies i can't so, believe the riseboro thing worked so, <laughs> so context funny. i just found out last week i guess this literally this weekend when i was list, listening to the big picture shout out to, to sean amanda and chris about like i had seen the tweets not realizing what it was about and then found out about the the last minute campaign that I can't believe it. It worked. Um, so go ahead. What, what, what exactly I just, happened? I just, it's the weirdest thing. Um, Mary McCormick, who is an actress from a bunch of like, I don't know, crappy TV shows is good friends with Riseborough. And essentially I think this is what Puck reported. And uh, ran like an actual honest to God grassroots campaign, hit up every single person in her life, like friends of friends called in every favor known to man. And as a result appears to have gotten this legitimate viral campaign going. And you have, you know, big, big big people like Charlize Theron hosting screenings of this movie that made like Mm $15,000 at the box office. It's this tiny little movie about a woman suffering through alcoholism. Mark Maron's in it too. And he's, he's also almost award worthy 
in his work. It's a good film. Um, just a genuine shock that it's such a weird, like modern viral campaign actually succeeded. Well, so the, the crazier part for me about the campaign is that I, like didn't get in at any of the like no Golden Globe, no SAG, no yeah. BAFTA, no like other precursors. She got um, an Indie Spirit nomination and then like some guilds. But like you said, nobody had seen this movie. And it really did feel like a last minute push from some actor friends. Like I saw the the Ed Norton tweet, not having any idea what it was, and then saw some film Twitter people being like, do we need to reconsider this in our <laughs> projections? And like it, it would literally be if if I just to bring it to sports, if it was if it was Jokic versus Doncic for <laughs> the whole year and then late March it was like, actually, it's Jalen Brunson because that's how like <laughs> nobody considered this as a, as a possibility. And then we get to the day that they announced the MVPs and Jalen Brun Brunson finishes fourth in MVP. You know, <laughs> it's really bad. it's really what it is. You know. <laughs> Oh man. Uh, well, I, I, here's my admission for you. I don't know what the quiet one is. What, what? I, I don't, it's, it's I don't the, know what you just mentioned. I don't know what those it, words were. It's, <laughs> it's, it's the movie that defeated uh decision to leave. Uh, I knew okay. decision to leave was too dark for anyone to anyone except freaks like me to like. I have not seen either. So I, I knew, I know about decision to leave. I, I had it in my five predicted, but I don't, I, I, you you would have better a better idea of this than I would. Um, oh no, it's called the Quiet Girl. Fucking deadline is so oh, bad. So we have women talking and the Quiet Girl, like the polar opposites of each other, competing. Jeez, I can't, um, believe, I can't believe women talking got in. I'm so happy. That's I good. was so I saw somebody predicting um, um, Ben Winshaw to make it as supporting actor, which would have been very Academy Awards to be like. <laughs> Here's a, a movie called Women Talking, and we're nominating the dude in Best Supporting Actor. And it's even funnier, and I, I don't really think this constitutes a spoiler, but his job is, in the movie is to shut up. <laughs> That's the point of his character. Uh, well, not I mean, not really, but it it is a it is a thing in it. I'll say I think that movie hurt because I couldn't tell you right now which of the three lead performances is my favorite. Like I don't know how you kind of coalesce around one candidate when they're all equally good. And I, I sort of reminiscing on it. I kind of think like Judith Ivy is as good as any of the younger cast members. So at least it will go down in history as a best picture winner. The Quiet Girl, Rural Ireland, 1981. A quiet, neglected girl is sent away from her dysfunctional family to live with foster parents for the summer. She blossoms in their care. But in this house, where there are meant to be no secrets, she discovers one. Oh boy. Really excited you, to really excited to watch this one. You go, Quiet Girls. It does have an 89 on Metacritic. So that's no. quite good. Progress. Um okay. So the 10 nominees for Best Picture: Avatar, Banshees, Elvis, Everything Everywhere, Fablements, Tar, Top Gun, All Quiet, Women Talking, Triangle of Sagness. And what was the last one that I missed? Did you say uh Banshees? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, no, I'm just bad at this. I wrote down 11 nominees. Um, <laughs> it's, all, it's All Quiet, Avatar, Banshees, Elvis, Everything Everywhere, Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun, Triangle, and Women. So I put The Whale in Babylon as my 10th and 11th nominee and take those out and put um, Triangle of Sadness in. I have a screener for Triangle of Sadness that I just have not had time to see, but I... I do know there is apparently a, a vomit inducing scene. There is. I need to be prepared for going in. It's quite funny. I think the movie is very, very Is good. it funny or is it like, Oz, why did you tell me that Wait was a minute. funny, funny? Holy shit. Dolly DeLeon didn't get in. I just, between Hong Chow and me being happy about that and Stephanie Shu getting in for everything everywhere, Dolly DeLeon didn't get in and she's the fucking MVP of Triangle of Sadness. Oh, well, there you go. Wow. I, yeah. The, like the, the, um, the debt, wi not that Weiler. Well, Daniel Detweiler didn't get in for till either, but I think that was, she was on the, the, the fringes of the outside. This is also where the, 
um, the two Leslie nomination actually <laughs> actually off, worked. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Actually, um, can, here's my hot take. I, I I really didn't think that movie was good. What, till <laughs> I think it's, or till till okay. I thought till was quite bad and uh she's very 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 good I just found it like almost it's so like hagiographic about the kid that it just didn't it, it it felt sort of like one of those award bait movies and I I think that's a bummer because it's a really really good performance but I get why people are not super super passionate about it I mean I, I, God, what a weird field. But Anna de Armas getting in for that dreadful movie is really that's something. Man. I still haven't seen um Blonde as uh, the, the movie you're you're referencing. It's two hours and forty five minutes. That's why I haven't. So I will say this. I started it and then when I saw it was headed toward traditional biopic territories, like I don't I don't necessarily know if I want to sit through three hours of Marilyn Monroe. No disrespect. I didn't sit through two and a half hours of Elvis either. Um, I just, I, I have the clip of he's white in my, in my, my folder for memes. Um, <laughs> you know, um, but like, why do we glorify Luca's triple double, but not James Harden's he's white. Yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, let's see other nominees, others, what? other fun things. I, I think the Brian Tyree Henry Oscar that was nominee good. thing. That's great. I can't believe Judd Hirsch actually got the nomination, especially considering the cameo at the end of the movie is the best supporting performance in it. <laughs> that I agree with. Um, I had Paul Dano in for supporting actor, but I do know that a lot of people pushed the the literal one scene of Judd Hirsch as yes. the potential, which is why I'm not sure what it does to the the chances of the Fablemans. I still see the 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 crazy part about all this. I still think it's a three three-way race. I don't know if anybody pulled ahead over the other. Like it was, a bad, it was a bad day for Top Gun. Yeah. Um, although, again, the preferential ballot just might have always been the chance that Top Gun had to win. Yeah, but the, 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 yeah, the below-the-line support is less uniform than you'd want because you really... I uh, There was thought it could win mm -hmm. for cinematography and it's not even nominated. Yeah, true. All quiet might, like you said, might be your leader, but Ugh. I, I, I don't understand. I don't get it. Have you seen it? I know that it's like, so I started it again, started it. And then the, the, um, conversation around it being like as graphic as saving private Ryan. But if the first 35 minutes was two and a half hours is what <laughs> I was told. And I was like, all right, I need to be in a mood to watch like a graphic war movie like that. But I did watch one of the like like I fast forwarded to a point and saw a very graphic storming of a trenches scene and was like, oh, so this it's this for two and a half hours. All right, I'll I'll wait until I'm in a very dark place and, and watch this. Um regardless, I when the BAFTA nominations, that was like the biggest thing that stood out was that that we should start at least considering this as best picture nom and then all of the below the line categories. Like it's it's fine. I, I thought it was a, a well made movie um mm. it has a, a whole like side political plot um with daniel Bruhl in it which is which is sort of interesting mm -hmm. i don't know i i kind of see it winning and i'm not too psyched about that winning best, best picture, picture? I oh see, i kind of see that in the top gun space now after these nominees as the movie that is everyone's like third place oh, okay i still mm, it's funny Oh, you mean like that it'll be on people's ballots in third yep. place? Mm -hmm. Okay. I would say so everything everything everywhere Banshees and Fableman still remain my guess as top three just because the, the, they all got director, they all yep. got screenplay they all got multiple acting nominations they all got did they all get editing? Hold on. Um, everything yep. everywhere. Not Fableman's, Fableman's, not Fableman's, and Banshees did, but Elvis did. Yes. So Banshees getting editing goes a long way toward its chances, for me at least. That might actually put it, and it's got the it's got the win at um the Globes for whatever that matters. Um, 
Wow. So those three have also won the third. So this is where we're actually going to have to pay attention to winning at PGA and SAG and all these other movies, all these other guild awards. And Banshees has four acting nominations. Yeah. Yeah. Four, four acting nominations. It's a, that's the same for, uh, for everything everywhere. Right. Yeah. Yes. Cause, yeah. Yep. And then the Fableman's got Michelle Williams, Judd Her Two. Yeah. And that's it. Two. All right. Okay. I so think that's your, it. Gun to your head. What's your pick? What's winning best picture? Um, mm, the safest one is Fableman's to me. I'm going Banshees. I think that's a, a fine pick. Uh, uh, there, I got shot. The gun was to my head, and I picked. I like. <laughs> I, I really do think like the, it's a it's it's a 33 33 33 at this point maybe closer to 40 40 20 but um yeah those those are anything but those three would actually shock me at this point we'll see if a coda reveals itself um over the next month which to be honest we sat here nomination morning last year it's like all right so power of the dog one got it so we'll just we'll wrap <laughs> wrap up this award season <laughs> um i will say the the acting um categories i'm a little intrigued because other than supporting like i have no idea who's winning best actress i think it'll be blanchette but michelle yo wouldn't surprise me and look i think we now well, i think i think that's a two horse race but I need to, I think we need to take the, the Riseboro. Oh my God. Seriously. Is, is Andrea Riseboro going to be the new Adrian Brody where, where you have fucking I think Daniel we need to take it and seriously. Jack Nicholson knocking each other out? Oh, yes. God, I hope not. I think we need to start taking, like, it got in. Like, now we're going to, like, watch her. So there, here's the tough part about it is that there's no other, and I don't remember that race as well. Like, was Brody also nominated for BAFTA or. Anything I, else? I, I couldn't tell you the precursors so me, from that. I would bet I would I'd be stunned considering how beloved Polanski was at the time. If if Brody didn't get in at the BAFTAs and the Globes and everywhere else, but it was seen as like a major powerhouse two horse race. And then uh, the pianist came in kind of strong late in the late in the game. OK, so he was nominated for uh, SAG. So that alone is like, all right, so the acting branch did nominate him. Um, the acting branch did not nominate Riseboro. Here's the or- problem with SAG. SAG has like whatever twelve thousand members or something right, like that, right. and like only the top ten percent of them are in the Oscars, are in the Academy pool. I think it's even smaller. It's probably like the top five percent are Academy voters. So, mm-hmm. meh. But the the thing I keep again, like like half she of got pro res- half of pro wrestlers are in SAG. So like, fine, like, but they fine, you're right. Think- like the the person that did the does the Whopper commercial is in yeah yeah exactly right but it's not the same thing it's not the same level of exposure it's not the same level of curiosity uh-huh. SAG SAG is driven by what's easy to watch to that, Leslie was not easy to watch that's fine and yet she got in so that's yeah. where I'm trying to like like this was clearly a a a, a swell of support from from what I saw. Like a bunch of actors. Like Wait, this she, was, she got in. She got in at SAG. No, no, no. I'm saying she okay, got okay, in yeah, at yeah. the Oscars. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's that the, top ten percent. So if that's if that's what you're saying, that just the top top ten percent got got her the nomination, but it's not enough to get her the win. Fine, it's still a two person race. Yeah, I'm I now. I look. I am you're, now going to look at some odds just to be like your like your cinematographers who are now voting in every category are not going to watch the micro budget any in indie movie that made $15,000. Mhm. The the die is cast. They're they're picking between Blanchett and Michelle Yeoh like everyone else. Okay. So according to Vegas, this is as of 9 minutes ago. Right? Oh no, this is as of 2 hours ago. So before the nominations, I oh, mean, this would have been good to to place a bet then. Um, Andrea Riseborough was not on the board. Oh my god! Wow, <laughs> and she got it. I'll, um, I'll bet someone made a, a ton of money in like a fucking Elon Musk Dogecoin pump and mm-hmm. dump of getting Andrea Riseborough. I need updated odds. VegasInsider.com. <laughs> um, 
So this is funny. They have Brendan Fraser as the front runner for. Um, uh, he did win at a strong, at strong Price. agree that he's the front runner. You think so? Not Butler or Farrell. I think Butler and Farrell are a strong two and three seed, and that Bill Nye and Paul Mezcal are, are happy to be there, hmm. even though they're the two best performances on that board. So Colin Farrell and Austin Butler have the same odds plus two twenty five. This is sad to talk about, but Austin Butler, I thought his chances went up after the um, the passing of Elvis's daughter. I don't think anyone cares. If that, I think they, if I no think, one cares, then then fine. Then. I think they went. I think they went down more by the way he got roasted on the internet for still having his Elvis voice. Oh, I think it's the opposite. I think the charm of him still having the Elvis oh voice is like we want him to make every speech now. That I find not, it so it's less a roast. But so okay, maybe that's a different react. I've heard it the opposite. That it's like I. I hope this is you now. I hope every movie oh you do God. going for. I hope you're in Dune too. With yeah, an is, Elvis voice. Is know? that like that's like poking fun at it though? That's not like an earnest, honest, like I like this. That's a but that's my R. point. Is like we're poking fun by making him give speeches. You know, oh Sag will tell me a lot as far as the acting nominations. I would go Spielberg winning his second, his third, um, Oscar for uh for that. Although in I, think my Todd, op- I think Todd Field's going to win. Directly. In my opinion, Todd Field should win. So. I'm fine with him winning. I, I I think I might actually pick the Daniels, but Todd Field would be a perfectly a perfectly lovely choice here. When is DGA? I have no idea. But it's like <laughs> it's now. I think that strangely enough would actually tell me who wins. That would be an important, a very important yeah. precursor on this one. I mean, look at the BAFTA noms. Hold on. I'm BAFTA trying to figure out what, what I have to see. Now, what's left? I need to oh. see whatever this Irish goodbye movie is. So I, I, I cannot gonna, tell you my list. So that's going to be a pain. <laughs> I um, I need oh, to you see. know what? All Quiet on the Western Front is Dune. That's what it is. Yeah, it's it's the classic, you know, 10, 10 ish nominations, mm-hmm. zero wins sort of movie. Oh, my gosh. It has 14 nominations. Holy fuck. <laughs> Look, oh, no, no, no. I'm reading the... Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I'm reading the BAFTA list. I'm... I'm oh, okay. It did get four... This is why we all then predicted it. Um, so hold on. Wait. All right. So I got to watch... I got to watch Bardo because I just... I'm really not a huge fan of Inneritu. Um, I got to watch House Made of Splinters and this uh, this Quiet Girl movie. Oh, and whatever. What the hell is Tell It Like a Woman? Yes, I need to see the movies that the, the <laughs> fucking songs come from. I watched some garbage Jesus movie with uh, What's Her Face from This Is Us a couple of years ago because of this. Oh, Breakthrough. Yeah. Oh, that was, yeah. Really, that was really rough. Yeah, my, my parents' church had a screening for that. Um, what the hell is this? It, it has like It has like six directors. Catherine what? Hardwick. Catherine Hardwick, great. She's pretty good. Taraji P. Henson directed something in this. Oh, there's a lot of people I like. Um, 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 Mar- um. Marcia Gay Harden, Cara Delevingne, uh, Eva Longoria. And right, I got a list of nominees. So everything everywhere I got 11 nominations. Um, All Quiet and Banshee's got nine. And the Fableman's got seven. And then Top Gun is six. Triangle of Sadness is three. The whale has three. They're, they're still updating this list, obviously. But <laughs> um, as far as what it looks like, everything everywhere has eleven nominations. Oh wow, this is cool. I went to, I got to Wikipedia before whoever is editing this is done editing this, so I can like keep refreshing like, it. Like, watching it. Yeah, I'm watching it be updated <laughs> in real time. Wow, this is like history right now. <laughs> oh, I did it, everybody. Okay, good, good job. Um, anything else, Oz? No. This 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 is a sort of crazy morning. I like it. I like the unexpected. There's no the the Riseboro thing is fun. There's no like surprise bad thing where I'm mad. You know, like even the Mescal nomination. I'm like, oh good, he got in. Well, that's my you know? favorite performance. Not maybe not just of the year, but perhaps of ever. So um, that's geez, that movie. Um, it's, a, it's an all timer for me. I, I was happy to see Glass Onion get a screenplay nomination, even though it didn't get any real consideration yeah. beyond that no best picture no um yeah i i i also i'm i'm happy that empire of light is nominated for cinematography it's a it's a terrible movie but boy is it lovely so 
Um, what was I going to say? It's uh, Glass Onion is a um is adapted because it's a sequel, right? Yep. I think I think absent very special circumstances, all sequels are considered adapted. That's okay. Someone on Twitter asked this, and I replied with that exact thing. And you know, as a nod to you, my friend, um, I said yes before Midnight was the same way that it was nominated for adapted yep. mm-hmm. because it's adapted from its two previous movies. Thump, 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 thump. Mm-hmm. Tugging at the old heartstrings with that one. You're welcome. 